We are live. Yeah, I'm just going to go over the possibilities going on right now. We got Israel attacked by Iran, and I can guarantee you Iran is, this is, gives them the perfect reason to gamble and take out Iran's uh, nuclear facilities. Uh, if they do, there's going to be more back and forth. It's going to be uh, worse. There's no doubt about it. And how bad it gets, we won't know until it happens. Uh, you got Turkey there. Uh, you got Iran. Uh, of course, um, Syria. They don't have much forces. I mean, their tanks are antique, and there's like, they did even halfway ran when they had their little civil war. So, you know, you don't have to worry about them much. But you've got all the other players, China, Russia, all that can happen. And the Bible does predict that they will be surrounded and it would be multitudes of countries that come against them. Uh, and we get asked this question, and when you when you think about investing, is this, as the Bible predicted, end times, end game? Because that would definitely should affect you on whether to invest or not right now. And we look at the different things, and, and, and the more this goes on, the better, most likely, or better chances that Trump is going to get elected. And if he does, he's the anti-war guy. He's going to try to put an end to the Middle East conflict. And yet now he does like him. He will listen to Trump. He will not listen to Biden. He does not like Biden. Modi of India does not like Biden. Biden is an illegitimate president. A lot of them don't like him. They all know he got in by cheating. They all know. They know that he doesn't know what day it is. And Biden says one thing to the, to the cameras. I love Israel. I love them. I love them. And then when he gets behind the scenes. He's saying, you idiot. What are you doing? I don't like this. Don't do it. Trying to tell Israel what to do. I don't think Israel's going to consider Biden anything he says. I think they're going to take out the next move. If they're going to take it out, the nuclear facilities in Iran, because they know where they're at. They're going to do it, and that's going to make things worse. So we'll look at Bitcoin, gold, silver, platinum, and real estate. Real estate, it's overpriced. I'm telling you, it's so inflated with artificial money uh, they just built that back up. It's probably the biggest balloon out there. If 2008 were to happen today, it took us like 13, 14 years to get to back even where we were prior to the 2008 debacle. It will take 30 years probably this time because to get back because the housing, now you're talking about a lot more money. The houses are a lot higher. There's a lot more money in real uh, personal real estate, uh, personal property, residential. And if that happens, I think it's going to. Uh, that's going to be a bad investment if you're buying that right now. I mean, I'm telling you, it's just overpriced. And the rule, and same for gold, same for Bitcoin, the rule is sell when it's high. Buy when it's low. Bitcoin right now, it's it's still, I don't think it's at all-time high. It's gone down, but it's still high. Gold, all-time highs. Real estate, all-time highs. St stocks, all-time highs. You don't buy. You just don't do it. That's why the guy that made that rule up, he said, don't do that. You're making a mistake. We look at Bitcoin, and like Bill Holder said, it's nothing. So what he's trying to say is, what's it back with? Nothing. And, of course, the people that have the argument is, like I said, we, he also mentioned that the founder guy is missing. Nobody knows what happened to him. Uh, the argument is, people will say this argument to fight that. What's the dollar back with? The dollar is back with the United States military. Bitcoin is not. Just take that in consideration. And we also don't know how Bitcoin will stand up in a real crisis. We don't know that. It was created after 2008. So we don't know if a 2008 happened, how it's going to react. I say it'll do whatever the NASDAQ does. It seems like when the NASDAQ is high, Bitcoin is high. When the NASDAQ takes a big loss, Bitcoin takes it. So 
that's the correlation I give on those two. So I'd be I'd be very cautious to buy Bitcoin right now. Now, gold, all time highs. Is it going to go higher? It is because as soon as Iran takes out those those facilities, it's uncertainty there. What is Iran going to do? What's a, what's Turkey going to do? Is Turkey going to declare war? On, declare with Iran declare war on Israel? If it does, the United States will have to go to war with both of those the countries. We will go to war with Israel. We might not like it. We'll do it. And that's going to create a massive. So gold, could, what could it get to? 5,000, 6,000, if, if they allow it to do it. If they don't freeze it, they'll probably freeze it to keep it uh, from getting outrageously, just ridiculously high. But if Trump wins he's going to stabilize the middle east he will most likely stabilize ukraine uh get the border under control those are positives uh, solid uh standard things that will cause gold to drop like a rock so if you buy gold at say 2500 because you think it's going to go to 5000 it may you know you could be right but you're also taking a huge risk because if it doesn't and Trump gets in, I think personally, after Trump's been in a while, it won't happen instantly, but it'll gradually start going down. And it's not going to stop until it gets to 1600 an ounce. So if you bought, let's say, 2500 it doesn't get to 5000 If you can make a profit on it, you, you want to you get rid of that gold. If you buy 25 and you can make a profit with it, you want to do it. You want to make sure you time that right because you're taking a huge risk. Because if you buy at 3000 Trump gets in, the wars are stopped, the border's under control, things stabilized, it's going to drop to 1600 you pay 3000 And let me tell you, brother, like Hulk Hogan would say, I'm telling you, it's going to be 30 years maybe before you get back to where you bought at. And that's going to be just like silver in the 70s because I lived through that. I saw what people were doing. They thought silver was going to 100 when it was 50. And the people that bought it were stuck with it for like how many years? Until 2011. 80. From 1980 to 2011 before they could even break even. So you got to have to consider those things when you invest. Silver, it's pretty safe. Still around a little under 30. It got to 50, almost 50 twice. Probably could get to 50 again. So that would give you an angle to sell and actually sell some silver and make some money on it. And if all this happens, probably the worst it's going to drop is the 20. So it's a lot safer. And it can still, for different reasons, with the clean energy crap and all those stuff, UVs and all that other, it can still get back to 30. Silver, not a I don't see a problem at all with buying it. Uh, if it gets to 50 or plus, then I think that's probably too high to buy it. And platinum, who traditionally, the average price of platinum has been uh, 16, 1700 an ounce. It's probably a pretty safe bet. It's probably the, the trends are the trends are it's going to go up. So you're probably safe with investing in that. But you just gotta you got to see the future. And nothing goes continually up. That ain't gonna happen. Gold is not going to continue. Right now we have crisis. We have uncertainty. It's going to go up for those it's, it always has historically. It's going to do that. But when the crisis is over, if this is not the end of the Bible, like Ezekiel, Revelation, and all that stuff talks about, it's going to go down, and it's going to drop fast, and it's going to drop hard. So, again, you just got to measure where we're at, where we're heading, how long it's going to be that way, and it, it can't be stabilized, and I think it can. Uh, I think Trump, We'll do that. I, I do really believe. I believe he's a stabilizer. Uh, will we have social rest, unrest here? Yeah, we're going to. And that adds to it. 
And that may take make gold take gold longer to start coming down, even if he's got the other stuff under control. And that's because uh, certain groups on the other side are allowed to do whatever they want to do, and they're not held accountable for it. Um, but you got to consider all this when you do this. I'm just saying, understand that nothing goes up straight up. It always it's always going to come down, and it's always going to come down big at one point. So I would be very careful what I'm buying at the price I'm buying it and what you're gambling on. And that's all I'm saying. And for me, I, 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 I will still try to look to buy platinum. I'll still will try to look to buy silver, not really looking to buy gold. There's no way I want Bitcoin and I do not want real estate. So I'm just saying that's what I'm doing. And I think it's reasonable what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to throw reason in there and say, hey, things change on a dime. Same as how quick this built up and went up to it can it can de-escalate and go that way. It's just as fast down. So anyway, you, that just, that's just something you should, should consider. And again, I lived through the 70s and I saw what happened. And yes, silver could go to 200 or 300. It will not be hyperinflation, I guarantee you. I will give you a 100% guarantee that it will not be hyperinflation if it gets to 300. I know it won't because if you take the money value in 1980 when it got to near 50 and you say, what is that worth today? It would be around $200. And the country I lived, you know, there was no hyperinflation then. I lived through it. Nothing happened. I'm telling you. Of course, I was a kid, but wasn't that big a difference? We pretty much lived the same. There's probably some stuff, maybe some stuff we bought cheaper. Instead of buying maybe a name brand, you bought an off brand. There's some little things you did. Buicks, if you bought a Buick, you, there was not really any. They, the names are different, but they all looked alike because they simplified their assembly line to make it cheaper to produce cars. So you do things to adjust to it, but it didn't really change our lives that much. We still had two family cars. We went to school. Uh, you know, every day it was it was the same every day. It was just a little bit, you had to just watch a few different things, but there was many were never close to hyperinflation. So if it if silver did get to 200 or 300, there's nothing to worry about. There will be no hyperinflation, I guarantee it. And you had to live through it. You know, a lot of people saying, ah, if it gets to that, we're, we're through, we're finished. It's going to be, now I'm telling you, if you, a person that's lived through it knows that won't be the case because I've already been through it once. So, anyway, I just wanted to go over that because you got a lot of people saying, hey, gold's too high to buy. And you got a lot of people saying, I'm all in, I'm going. I've decided now to buy gold when I, I could have been buying gold back when it was uh, <laughs> consistently under 2000, you know, and it was in the, in the, uh, what would you say, 18, 17, 1800 mark, you know, FOMO is when you buy now because it's at all time highs. And again, it is a gamble to be buying it at this high because you don't know for sure how high it's going to get before things settle down. And eventually things settle down unless this is the end, which I can't predict that. I don't know. Um, some other things have to happen. Uh, Israel doing what, doing what I think they're going to do. I don't know what that does to the equation. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. I know gold will go way up if they do that. And I, I expect, Sal will have his his uh, market report, market show tomorrow and probably going to stay. I would think he ought to do three hours because you got to watch that market tomorrow because if Israel hits them prior to the overnight markets opening up, it's going to send a shockwave through the system and gold's going to go way, way, way up. So anyway, there, there you have it. And I personally think Gold's too risky right now. And, 
you know, if I if gold jewelry comes my way, I can get it for like, you know, gold earrings, 10 carat 14 for five or 10 or 15, 20 dollars. I'll do it because I know it's worth a lot more than that. And I know if gold fell to 1600, I'm still up. So I would, I, I, I weigh that when I do that. So anyway, I just wanted to do that and do a show on that because I think people are getting crazy on wanting to buy gold right now. I just think you should reconsider that decision. So keep stacking, keep packing because times we live in and I will see you soon if we're still here tomorrow because you don't know, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. And, uh, and if it goes so extreme the other way, $20,000 gold an ounce probably won't do you any good. So it won't matter anyway. But stay tuned for the next show.